Hey there, ELAR and writing doctors. This is the writing Dr. Bill McDonald. And today we're going to work on one revising question. And if you think of your hand as a tool, it can be used by your students all throughout the year, even on the test as a graphic organizer to organize a reading paragraph, which would be the main idea, topic sentence, the specific supporting sentences, and the conclusion. It could be uh, the introduction, the body paragraphs, and the conclusion, breaking it down into sections. It could be for revising, where you don't just look at the content, but you look at the arm, where you add, remove, replace, or move content. Or if you say you're armed, with your arms, then the E and the D could be eliminate and delete because sometimes they're going to say, we don't want that sentence there. Like in the previous video that I just did with you, that one only got 50% and it was a whole paragraph of content that belonged. If you put your finger in the middle, the main idea, the central idea of a paragraph, the focus of a paragraph. I can feel my muscles moving, but if I touch, let's say one finger over here and I wiggle my muscles, I can't feel them moving anymore. And so what they, your kids need to do is uh, if there's five, six, seven, eight sentences, which one doesn't belong? In the case of the one that we're gonna do today, there are six sentences already. So um, on my graphic organizer, I'm gonna have to draw an extra hand, but they're wanting to add a sentence to close the paragraph. And so the importance of understanding closing a paragraph or a passage is that every it, it's it, it's going to cause everything to tie together, or it, everything in that paragraph ties together. And I had showed you in my graphic organizer that everything in a paragraph ties together. Let me go ahead and uh, share the screen with you guys. Uh, get rid of a couple of things here that it will be distracting uh, that I won't need. Let me show you the graphic organizer first. Okay, there it is there. It's called the readvising. What I went ahead and do since I'm having trouble with my document camera, if you haven't heard, if you're my friends, I dropped it like two or three times going into a training. And so I needed to... Uh, kind of do it by hand first so that I could show all of you how to use the strategy. And so there's the hand if you want to take a good look at it. And it's called readvising. When you're doing reading, you're just looking at the content and you're trying to understand, you're trying to understand what is the content uh, right here, what is the content? I just have to understand it and comprehend it, answering questions based on comprehension. Now that's where it's gonna get a little bit more difficult, uh, not this year uh, on the counting questions, but it'll be a field tested item, a question test that's separate, or possibly they'll add some open-ended uh, multi-type questions that I'll be going through throughout the year for you to help you. Uh, Revising means are we going to be looking at the understanding of the content or improving the content? And so revising means to look at something differently now than you will later. If you think of the candy now and later, that's what revising is. Change the content and improve it. So what I've done to save time is I've gone ahead and written in what some of you call hashtag, the keywords for each sentence, because how can you add a sentence to a paragraph that's going to tie everything together unless you know what the other sentences are? And so we'll make sure that we uh, go over that in a second. But I want to first show you what was the question that it came from from this past year, and it was a fourth grade question. It was number eight on this past spring's 
2021 test and the state is about to release they're probably going to release the test questions either today or possibly next weekend or the following they said mid to late august was what i was told but if you're a parent then you can access the test of the child in your grade level or if you're doing if you're a teacher doing tutoring then you can ask the parent to give you the code uh, and the birth date of the child that you're that you're trying to help um, with their test so that they can have a good chance for success so this is question number eight it only got 59 percent correct that means uh 41 percent of the kids in texas did not know how to understand to close a paragraph that you need to understand it has to be something that ties everything together like the laces on a shoe now as always i recommend that you have some sort of a checklist and i believe that there has to be a checklist that's going to cover the learning styles of a lot of kids so the first thing is going to be and you can see it there the r read the question softly or loudly, not silently, because silence is deadly in a classroom of auditory learners. Once we read, we're going to underline anything that we feel is important so we can show that we have an understanding of the question and what's being asked. Several of you have different strategies that you ask them to do with boxes and circles and whatever. Let's call that labeling where you mark the test in a way that um, you will understand what you're doing the teacher will understand and then you're going to evaluate and execute a plan but the main e is begin to eliminate each answer that you decide is incorrect and explain why you're going to eliminate it and you'll select one answer in the in the book and the scantron and so this is going to be sort of like a checklist if you're already doing online then I'm using uh, directly online. I'm not doing pieces of paper. And so your kids, once they've done each reading, I'm using Zoom. Once I've read the question, I'm going to check it. Once I've read it in the passage, I'm going to check it. Once I've underlined in both places, I'm going to check it. When I've labeled in both places, I'll check it. After I've eliminated the three answers that I think are going to be incorrect i'm going to eliminate and then explain to you briefly why i think those answers should not be there and that's what i'll do for you and then finally we will select the correct correct answer and explain why it's correct okay but i want to show you something really important if you notice on the bottom some very important information here it says it's student expectation 4.11 b where we're going to develop drafts into a focus structured and coherent piece of or of writing by <coughs> excuse me organizing with purposeful structure okay the key word is purposeful structure and what they're saying there is go back to the mouse click on um i'm gonna do i'm gonna draw let's see if it allows me to do this i have yellow highlighted sometimes it doesn't there it goes okay powerful instruction including the introduction the body and the transitions and the conclusions so what what they're trying to say is purposeful structure and i'm sorry i didn't make it come all the way out is they don't want repetitious things they don't want you restating something in the paragraph anywhere repetition is not development it's just like grabbing a brick that's on a wall that you built and moving it 
from that spot to another spot. And if you keep doing that over and over, you're leaving behind holes and gaps. And so as we can see here, the question um, is the second sentence and they gave you information in the first sentence. So let's go ahead and look for information that we can underline and I'll use black just so you can kind of see it better. Jake's seventh paragraph, okay? And I'm gonna make a bracket here because I would highly suggest that we're only gonna focus on sentences seven, 27 through 32 needs a closing sentence, okay? So closing is sort of like a pinky. So we're not closing the entire passage. We're just closing that paragraph. And just to verify that, they did say, which of the following sentences should be added? So an arm, it's add, remove, replace, and move. Let me briefly show you, and you're going to have to see my all my strategies here, but in the advanced folder, there's revising where you're, you think of root beer bottle, IBC, introduction, body, conclusion. When you're doing revising, you're going to put something in. You're going to take something out. You're going to move something around. And all you're working on is the development and the organization of the content, not the conventions, by adding, removing. Adding is green, removing red, replacing it green, moving it yellow. And then if you add the ED, the eliminate and delete, then you're, it means that you're not replacing anything else. It just means that it doesn't belong. And you're only going to be able to add, remove, replace, or move one word, one transition, one, one word, one phrase, a transition word or phrase or a sentence, one sentence. And only if you're doing an essay response to a question, you'll add a paragraph maybe to add another support to your answer. So I'm gonna undo some of those last ones so that we can make sure that we um, can continue looking at the question in more detail. Uh, and just the reminder that all we're trying to do is to close the paragraph. Okay, so remember that with with even numbers, you always have F, G, H, J, and with odd numbers, you're always going to have A, B, C, D. So let, let's take a look. I'm going to clear the drawings and s click on the mouse. What I'm doing is a lot of you have asked me when I'm doing each little activity, can I explain to you? what buttons I'm pushing because some are not familiar with how all of this works. So there's the passage, but it said paragraph seven sentences, uh, 27 through 32. There they are right there. And so I would go ahead and make sure that I mark that off. I said, you, let's, let's make an opening and a closing bracket. All they're saying is focus on this one. And we're trying to add right here, OK? After sentence 32, let me just make sure, yes, it says after sentence 32, OK? We're either going to add, for whatever reason, F. G, H, or J. And so it's going to be like a plug and play where you see which one of these stays with the content. And if you remember Mrs. PBC, well, there's two letters on Mrs. PBC that you need to see. And if you uh, look at my previous video, you'll meet her. It's basically meaning. If it changes the meaning, don't pick it. It's not about the main idea, the R, if there's repetition or a run on, re eliminate it. 
in, in editing and both revising. If the subject is missing for editing, eliminate it. If it's not specific to the content of this paragraph, like we're going to look for which one is specific, which one is GPS, get pretty specific so that it can close this paragraph. PVC, is the predicate missing for editing? Then eliminate it. Uh, is the point of view different? Is the purpose different? Eliminate it because we want to stick to one purpose in each paragraph or passage. The V is, is the verb missing or is it too vague? And the C is, does it change the content, which is what's going to happen in this one? Or is the um, cups issue a problem? Editing is cups, as in capitalization, usage, punctuation, spelling, and sentence boundaries. And since this is a revising question, yes, it's revising, but sometimes we're going to find grammatical errors uh, when we're doing that. And so you could either highlight all of this, or you could go ahead and um, make the brackets. And then I suggest that just so the kids know uh, that you're kind of staying on task, you can put somewhere at the beginning of here, um, we'll, we'll do a little text box right here and say, oh, this is for question, question, ah, Question number, and let me double check. It's going to be question number eight. So we're going to add a sentence at the end of this paragraph. So let me clear all the drawings. And what I'm going to do now is take you over to the hand that I drew so that you can read it. Um, I want to make sure that you can read it clearly. So I'm going to rotate it. Uh, so that it's to the right. Let me uh, try that so you can read it, read it a little bit better. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. And you're going to see, uh, well, let me back out just a hair. So I want to remind some of you that, that didn't see it before. If you look to the left here, um, I'm just going to put some check marks. Um, your palm has several things. Check the purpose, check the prompt, the point of view. Uh, is it paragraphs? And then everything in a passage ties together. So we have T-I-E-S. And so I made an acronym to help both reading and writing teachers understand that everything in this paragraph, in this case, ties together the topic sentence, the main idea, the, the thumb would be the main idea, the specific supporting sentences. So instead of having you read the entire paragraph with me, I went ahead and I went ahead and um, read it myself in advance so that you would be able to have a chance just to kind of see the strategy. So my normal graphic organizer has five fingers. So you're gonna see 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And then I drew an extra finger, which we'll see when we get down there. And what they wanted to do was add a seventh finger. And so one of the reasons that I have the hand a little bit to the left on the graphic organizer is so that you can try this strategy and say, okay, sort of like Spider-Man, in the same way we do Spider-Man, we need to use a web to kind of tie everything in a paragraph together. So sentence 27 said, today, present tense, Haley sells art and bracelets uh, through Libby's Hope. So a company that they made to help her sister, which we met in our last video, who's got some health issues, so it's nice to have a sister who's willing to uh, help you through life, okay? Um, I made a little web to connect 2728. The money now helps many families. So uh, Haley decided, I don't want to just 
help the families that are um, mine related to me. I want to help lots of families. So an example, GPS, something that she does, she want to add, how else does she raise the money? She runs this lemonade stand, uh, Lemonade for Libby event, okay? Um, now, that's not developed yet. So what she does or the author does in this paragraph is GPS, they get pretty specific by saying, okay, 29 is telling you about an another event that raises the money. Sentence 30 says that people set up lemonade stands uh, on the last week of July. So what do they do? Who does it? People. What do they do? Set up lemonade stands when? The last week of every July. So this is just a one week um, uh, a year thing. So there's 52 weeks in the year and they just do it one time uh one one time a year so if you keep in mind if you see there that people um the next one sentence 30 says people set up lemonade stands on the last week of july that's 30 31 is how do you connect that they give that money from that last week to the uh, epileptic foundation which is the organization that helps people with seizures and then the last one that's actually there is uh sentence 32 says that there's 48 states that had lemonade stands um back in uh 2014 okay so what they're wanting is how do i tie all of that together so i'll turn i'll rotate the I'll rotate the image 90 degrees counterclockwise. So you can see when you're doing revising, there's two ways that they have you. Um, and I apologize, it's not always a smooth uh, doing, doing things on a computer. And I'm sure you can relate to that. Um, I'm going to do some things by hand. So to make sure it's big enough so you can see it. Move it to the right just to here. Thank you for your patience. All right. So there, that's going to be big enough now. So let me show you. You're, they're either going to have a box sentence. They're going to say, move that box to a certain place in a paragraph. Now, if you look at my hand, you can put it here or here or here or here. It's going to give you four locations or they're going to give you four different choices. They're going to tell you where they want it. They want it at the end of the paragraph. And so I have the choices that were mentioned here. And I made three of them in red. F, G and J. And I made one, the correct one in green. Letter F says, which sentence could close? Uh, the event is held once every year. You're not going to close the paragraph by restating something that was already mentioned. They had already said uh, that they do it once every year. Um, in sentence 29, it says each year. And sentence 30 says it's, it's in the last week of July. So I don't need to add something that's already there g why did i limit it it says they earn more they could earn more with tea or food because that doesn't relate to the content it's a compare and a contrast or it's adding information about something else that's not going to contribute to the graph it's not going to tie everything together because this section was only about raising money, mainly about the using the lemonade stands. So letter H, the green one, we're going to keep. Everyone hopes that people will 
uh, continue to support this wonderful event. So specifically, they're talking about this event, the Lemonade Stands. And so since um, all the sentences from 29, 30, 31, and 32 were about the Lemonade Stand, if you want to close the paragraph, then you want to continue tying in about the Lemonade Stand. Well, hopefully people in all 50 states will have raised money because they said at one point in 2014 there were 47 states that did it okay so let's find out why this last one other groups should set up lemonade stands well yeah probably they should but you're taken away from the focus uh and so if i'm guessing letter j is the distractor because they're not talking about that specific event. They're talking about something else that somebody else should do, and they, they're turning it to persuasive. Other people should do this. Well, it was informative all the way up until then, and so I don't think that you would want to switch the purpose of the writing in the, uh, in the paragraph. Let's just tie it all together, saying it would be awesome if everybody could support everyone that's their hopes that pe people will continue to support this wonderful event, the lemonade stands that are done every year. So that's how I, one way I would recommend that you uh, teach the concept of uh, tying a paragraph together. Tell your kids they can think of Spider-Man and his webs and everything in a sentence uh, works together, but every sentence, when it's turned into a paragraph, becomes a specific G GPS get it gets pretty specific when you start adding specific supporting details for each sentence and all they wanted to do was tie that paragraph together with a closure not in not tie the entire passage so you got to be careful some questions will say what sentence at the end of the passage could tie the passage together or this selection together and so make sure you identify by labeling or underlining, are they asking me to just close the paragraph or the entire paragraph or selection? Do me a favor and share this video uh, with your teacher friends. I hope that it was helpful. Uh, I was a teacher for 12 years and I just felt like there was not enough information in the curriculums and the programs that we're using we need to supplement we need to differentiate our instruction pretend like we're doctors helping patients who need surgery not just band-aids and i'm focusing on the questions that we're giving your kids troubles so that means that there's certain gaps in some of the programs or in the way that we're teaching that's not getting clear to the kids we don't want almost 40% of the kids getting an answer like that correct. And so the cool thing about this strategy is my hands, emergency room, editing and revising ER, is everything that I'm gonna talk about this year with you in terms of ELA are gonna be having the acronyms E and the acronym R, E is going to be editing extended responses, extensions, essays. The R is gonna be responding to a, a question in a complete sentence, uh, revising, fixing content or re reading, just understanding the content and answering questions about it. So please do me a tremendous favor. There's lots of teachers who have kids who struggle with understanding how to put the sentences in a paragraph together to make sense. So this might be a way and the kids can draw their own hand on test day. And like, as we saw, this paragraph had six sentences. So we drew six fingers. It asked about a seventh sentence. So we just drew a seventh finger and determined which one was gonna be the one that would close it together. So. God bless and have a great day.